Hi, welcome back. My name is Simon Kuipers. I'm the head coach of the T Alpha Academy and also coordinator of the Center of Excellence in Heerenveen, the Netherlands. Hi, I'm Ian Steen and I'm assistant coach of the T Alpha Academy. And we welcome you to this great shop and we're going to talk about speed skates today. Today we're going to talk about different skates. For example, this is a short track skate. But first we're going to talk about the long track skates. We want to start talking about this skate. It's very old fashioned. In 1875, they invented this skate. Back in the days, they used to wear these hats and they had these skates. This is called a Friese doorloper. Made of wood, there's a simple piece of iron in there. You can put your own shoe in there or a wooden shoe. They used to wear those back in the days. This strap at the back holds your shoe in place. You can use these old leather laces to keep your shoe tight at the front. And people just skate on these. They used it for transport in the winter. So they could cross the ice, cross the lakes, but they don't use it anymore. Only sometimes for fun, but this is not a skate to learn skating on. Very young kids, maybe already from the age of two, can start skating on these skates. As you can see, they have a double iron on these sides that makes them very stable on ice. It's difficult to skate on them, but it's easy for them to get a little bit of a feeling how you can glide on ice. So kids are standing on this, they put their shoe in there, the parents can hold them up and they can glide a little bit on the ice. So they have the, they have the first feeling how it goes. You can adjust these if the feet are growing, so you can make it a little bit longer or shorter. A lot of kids learn to skate on those skates. It's a skate of the brand Sanstra and it's more like a modern skate of the Friese doorloper. It's really easy to tie your shoes with it and it's easy to learn to skate on because it's really low compared to the ice. If it's too difficult to skate on when you just start to skate, you can use those. You have some double irons. It's easy um, to hold your balance like this. This is an ice hockey skate and a lot of kids in different countries in the Netherlands learn to skate on ice hockey skates. It's easy to make turns on and they're also nice and warm. Those skates are used to dance on the ice, but it's also possible to learn to skate on. So a lot of boys and girls like to skate on those skates to learn to skate on. And maybe later they start figure skating on ice. If kids grow a little older and they're able to stand on their skates, they can go start skating on these. This is like a shoe, it's low, so they're still close to the ice. It has a good iron, it stays sharp, and they don't have to wear their own shoes on these. So they go in here with like bare foot or socks, and they can tie the laces all the way up, and they can skate on these. If they have trouble skating on these, because it's not stable enough, they can start skating, for example, on these skates. They're a little higher, they are more like a solid boot, they have this strap at the front, they have laces, and it's a bit more stable. The negative side of these is that the mobility of the ankle is a bit more tight. Especially if you look at these, because these are even more higher. It looks like a, a ski boot, but you want to have the ankle mobility. But for kids who are still learning and want to have fun on the ice, these are also good skates to start with. When you really like speed skating and you want to start training a bit more serious, kids and adults can think uh, on skate like this. Uh, it's a bit more expensive, and you can see that the leather on the inside of the shoe is a bit more soft, but also the bottom of the shoe is a bit more stable. So it's really comfortable to skate on, uh, and also good to make the next step when you want to skate a bit more serious. This skate can clap, and the name is a clap skate. In 1980, they developed this one. And in the beginning, nobody wanted to skate on them because they thought it's not fast. Some male skater said it's a skate for female. And there was one female with the European Championship who started skating on these. She wasn't a top favorite, 
but she won three out of four distances and became European champion. A day later, it was very busy at the factory because everybody wanted to skate on these. And that was the beginning and the breakthrough of the club skate. And one of the reasons it's faster is because you can extend your push. Imagine your, your leg is here, you're pushing, and you can have longer contact with the ice. Straight on your left, also on the other side, but also in the corners. You have more time to generate speed. As you can see, those skates are way more expensive. A lot of pro skaters skate on blades like this. All round skaters skate more on blades like this. It's called the Icon. And the strong sprinters skate more on the sapphire blades. Those are more stiff. Those are a bit more flexible. Sprinters generate more speed and in a the corner they feel more stability with the stiffer blade. The difference with a short track and with a long track skate, you probably can see it already. There's no clap. Both are attached. There's like a big gap. So they're very high because they lean a lot in the corner. The shoe feels like concrete, very hard, very stable. And also the setup, if you look, is totally different than on a long track skate. The shoe is a bit higher, you have the strap again. And of course you have different ones. Orange, made in the Netherlands, also a great blade. 23 years ago, the last 11th city tour was happening. So every year, all the Dutch are hoping for the next one. It's a legendary tradition, and when it's happening, all the Dutch go crazy. It's a tour of 200 kilometers. You can imagine, it's outside, it's really, really cold because all the lakes have to be frozen. If you like to skate the 11 city tour, or a long distance on frozen lakes, it's good to skate on those skates. It's really nice and warm, really, really comfortable, and good to skate like long tours. At some point, it's possible that there's no ice and you have to cross a bridge, for example. You can remove the shoes from the blade and you can run a little bit. In the Netherlands they call it klunen. If you arrive at your skating facility, you put your skates on and you put the skate guards on your blades. So now you can walk on the concrete or on the mats towards the ice. And if you're close to the ice or at the ice, you take them off again. So your blades stay sharp and you put these away. If you finish skating, your skates are wet from the ice. So the best thing to do is dry them off. Make sure everything is dry so they don't get rust on there. You put them in a in towel like these. You put them in your backpack. And if you're home, you take them out of your backpack and put them somewhere dry and warm. Instead of using a towel, you can also use these skate guards. So you can walk on them and the skates also stay dry and you don't get rust on them. So this is the best way to maintain your precious skates. In our next video, we will talk about training tools. For example, an elastic cable or a corner bell. See you soon. Thank you, bye-bye. Sam, thank you very much for your hospitality. You're welcome. Great, thank you. Welcome to Great store, time. thank you.